Hey YouTube, Todd here again with another video. This time we're going to be talking about fixing uh, the tire rub on the right rear tire of my 2002 Cougar XR. So backing up just a little bit, I start. I bought the car uh, back in March. It had uh, several several running issues uh, and some suspension issues. One of which was the tire rub on the right rear. Uh, it was noticeable, very noticeable with uh, me and the seller in the car. Uh, it was less noticeable once I got it running with just me, more noticeable with one passenger, and like unnerving, like almost scary with, uh, with two passengers. So I get the car, the tire rub thing, he thought it was a failed strut, that the right rear strut was, was bad and would need replacing. And of course, that's much more expensive than the, the fix ultimately proved to be. Um, <clears throat> but that did help me, you know, get the car at a, at a better price. And I was suspicious of that because I didn't notice, usually when struts go bad, uh, you notice some front to rear, a lot of noticeable front to rear oscillation. When you come to a stop, uh, the car didn't present any of that. The, the struts felt fine. Uh, you can also bounce one corner of the car and it should settle like almost immediately if the, strut, if the strutter shock's bad. It, it should oscillate several times. The car didn't do that. Uh, and the car sat level. It did not sag anywhere in any of the corners. Um, and it, other than, and I didn't know that at the time, the, uh, there was the, the knock from the bad uh, in link specifically the right rear end link um but it wasn't this uh you know this catastrophic type sound right and of course i had a similar uh, a similar sound coming from the uh the contour so anyway i get the car running um my daughters i think were here the right after i got it that first weekend and the car wasn't running so i get the car running in the two weeks in the interim and I'm, you know, happy to show it off, you know, proud of it. And we go to dinner and with the third passenger, and these are, these are teens, so they're not little kids or anything, but with the third passenger seated in the right rear, uh, unnerving is a, is a gentle word. I mean, even not turning, uh, previously the tire would only rub if you're turning left and you load up that right side of suspension, but now just straight over a mostly smooth um road if you hit the smallest irregularity the tire would rubble so what does all that have to do with a loose uh, fuel filler neck well let me s let me advance a couple of uh, a couple of slides so we get to the restaurant and i find i had looked right before i bought the car from you know the face of the of the wheel inward and i didn't see any signs of any tire rub or any any markings on the fender liner so we get to the restaurant and you know i kind of get down on the uh, on the asphalt and look and this is uh looking forward the right rear tire here's the fender liner and i do see this that's the first thing i see there you know there's something has been rubbing the not the face of the tread but the inner corner of the uh of the shoulder of the tread so that's concerning uh and then uh really wasn't paying attention now but this is actually the bottom of a welded on bracket for a support for the fuel filler okay so it's starting to connect the dots and i decided to measure the gap right i have my finger there and it's about one finger uh, it's kind of a tight fit getting a finger in there but the other side was double that. I could get two fingers in there. So what's causing this fender liner, you know, either the fender liner's pressing forward or the, the entire frame, subframe, has been forced back an inch or so or, you know, finger, finger width. Uh, and that's actually my finger, uh, you know, fingers facing this, so it's not the full width and the th thickness, I guess. Um, and then I look a little closer, and I should, I should have seen this before I bought it, but I was expecting the rub, you know, to be 
in this area and on this area of the tread well it's in that inner shoulder and this is what i saw okay so that's the other side of the bracket you were seeing the very bottom of it here and i see this kind of triangular shaped hole and there's some more rubbing going on back here at times uh, and that didn't happen on you know the way to the to the restaurant the whatever two mile drop or whatever this has been happening for a while so you know baby the car back home uh, kind of disappointed you know put all the work and effort into getting it running and then now it's you know it's this this tire rub and uh, I have no idea what it is so I get on the forums on the new Cougar forums and I post and nobody really has a uh, diagnosis for it so I start later on that night I start digging through uh, older and older threads and I came across similar threads as this one and this this uh, poster basically put the the best rod up and the best pick so i'm borrow, borrowing his uh his material here uh and this was a not i don't know that i'd call it a common problem but it certainly wasn't uncommon with these cars very early in their life you know maybe five years old or so many of them started presenting this problem of a loose fuel filler neck and he took a good picture here you see the you know you see the gap it's definitely off centered it's back toward the rear of the car this would be the front of the car and the the wheel is right right here you can't see it in this picture but the wheel well and all is about right here uh and these things would rattle you know and they're annoying because they're loose people would worry you know it's going to fall off or something spill fuel everywhere uh and it turns out in the fix is or the problem is right here gotta love these cost engineers uh so what ford did instead of using a metal uh fastener that's right they chose to use plastic so it saved whatever two cents per unit uh so here's the i think i think this was removed or i don't i don't know how he got this picture uh or maybe that's what he ordered somehow and replaced it with and there's some kind of I don't know, adhesive, whatever, thread locker stuff Ford used. And then where this mounts to the, uh, the chassis, there was, there was a, uh, a grommet for this to uh, actually thread into. Uh, and it, you know, at some point, these things just fail, right? They break in half. They, you know, just disintegrate from weather, and they're gone. And it, allow, it allows this fuel filler neck uh, some fore and aft, um, and probably some up and down um, movement. So this is what I found at the restaurant, and, I, and I'm reading this like at night. It's like close to midnight. So the next morning, for, first thing the next morning, I go out and get under the car, and this is this view. This is uh, like me laying on my back, looking and seeing and now here's the fuel filler right this this way is inboard and curves around and is into the fuel tank here's the support bracket you can see the welds because at this point instead of running parallel to the ground under the car it makes an upward turn to get to the actually the the gas door so you can fill the car so it's just supporting that you know that that bend uh, you can see it's clearly against the fender liner. And then here is the mounting bracket, right? And this is the mounting hole. So the fix was this. This was an on-hand metal screw that I had and washer I just dug out of my toolbox. And you notice how far this has been, uh, this was pushed uh, forward, yeah. So I had to go from here to here. So that distance is probably, it's at least a half inch. It's probably going on a good a good inch. So I actually had to get my, uh, my younger daughter out there to help me and to wake her up and because uh, I needed an extra hand. It was just, uh, I couldn't hold because now this has been, the fuel filler has been bent over time. Uh, at times it would flop forward. You saw the hole, uh, the tread of the tire would, would catch the, uh, the edge of that bracket. 
and you know snap it toward the front of the the snap it forward because the tires rotating this way right <clears throat> anyway um over time it had, it had become bent so i had to have her hand to help me uh, keep it in place get the screw started got the screw started and bam they get for free the um, mysterious tire rub slash bad strut slash uh you know whatever suspension problem at least that one is done. I still have the, uh, I do still have the rear end links to replace. So this is what I saw after. I'm like, well, you know, let me see what my, I've cleaned this up, by the way, since then. Um, but now my fuel filler neck is toward the rear of the car. And of course, you can see the gap and, you know, it's no longer centered and it's, uh, and it's fitting here. Um, and if it were any further distorted i don't know that i could get the cap off and all of it but it still it, it works i can you know uh, remove remove and install the the fuel cap uh so there's a moral in all this uh i guess maybe there's two uh in my in my opinion first of all don't set the car up for failure by cheaping out on stuff like this all right that and there's no recalls that i'm aware of on this or anything but come on i mean don't don't cheap out on stuff and you know i don't know what the i'm sure the projection was it would last longer than that but it didn't so yeah if you're the cost engineer or car designer or whatever don't do stuff like this that's that's ridiculous but also and that's usually the case um the the previous owners would would have noticed this and this is probably this fuel filler it probably started off exactly like this and exactly like the threads from you know like i don't know 2008 or something uh it would have been loose it would have been clanging around and every time you fuel the car you would have seen you know or had the potential to, you know, every time you stuck the nozzle in there this thing's going to be loose and wiggling around it might have been back it might have been forward but you had indications that something was wrong now at this point it wouldn't have been bad enough to cause the uh to cause the rub um but over the however many years and however many tens of thousands of miles <coughs> um it ended up from really from owner neglect from not addressing the problem it ended you ended up with this at about 170,000 miles so how serious could that have been well it's already metal contact in the tire uh, and it's already making a mark on the tire would it ever have gotten bad enough to really cut the tire down or cause a blowout probably not without you know really causing a major fuel leak but neither of which you want and if the the fix was simply getting under there and looking uh, even if you have to pay somebody to do that to replace a screw i mean come on um you know that was a simple fix uh but anyway that's i guess that's about all i have for today uh, please rem remember like share comment subscribe if you've had a similar uh similar issue with your cougar uh, and this uh, may be similar with the Contours, Mendeos, and Mystiques, but, uh, or any other car, I guess, for that matter. Uh, love to hear, hear your comments, and uh, be back soon with another video. Thanks, guys.